Hello everyone, this is Coach Carol. In this lesson, I want to walk you through the process of creating a family history blog site. Let me share my screen with you. There's more to the creation of a family history blog than you might imagine. But I want to make it simple for you today and give you a couple of choices along the way. And as you know, or as you may not know, a blog is a way in which you can post short stories about your ancestors. That is, if it's a family history blog, we have many different kinds out there, but I'm focusing in on family history blogs. So in your blog, you might have some stories about a particular ancestor. You might pepper it with illustrating images such as a location or a photo. There are many different ways that you can approach the setup of a family history blog site. And in the previous lesson, you had a look at some of those family history blogs. I'm sure you've done some further explanation exploration since then that is the best way to learn actually discovery in a self-managed style in this segment i'm going to cover three main segments first the technical steps that it takes to create your blog site then the planning steps that you should put in place before writing your family history stories. And finally, what are the steps you take in posting those stories to your blog site? Sounds like a lot of work, but it can be done quite quickly. Let me show you how. The technical steps involve three main things to do. The first thing is to establish an account with a blog service. My two favourite blog services are Blogger and WordPress. I'll show you both. The second is to configure your blog site. That is, make it look like you want it to look, using templates or changing the way the layout appears. And thirdly, to set up an about page, something that tells the readers about you as a person. So let's go through these three steps with the two blog services that I ascribe to. It's pretty simple to create a WordPress blog site if that's your choice, but keep in mind that it's not free, that you will encounter a different set of plans that you can purchase and you'll have to decide on which will suit your budget. All you do first of all is go to wordpress.com where it will ask you do you want to create a website in minutes and start your site is very prominently shown on that page. So when you click that start your site it will bring you to this page which asks you to give it a name. So they're talking here about a domain name. That is the URL, the place on the internet that people will go to, to find your blog. And it's a good idea to have something in mind before you get to this page. So write some things down about what you'd like to call your family history blog. For instance, recently I started a new one and I've called it Family History Preserved. But you might want to think ahead and have maybe more than one blog which talks about those ancestors on the different sides of your family tree. So you might call it by the surnames of your ancestors. So the first thing to do with your WordPress site is to choose your name. And it gives you some options that you can choose for the extension, whether it be .family, .org, .club. I chose 
dot blog for mine so that I can remember it quite easily as the place that I go to to post my blogs. Step two for WordPress is to pick a plan. Now, when I was walking through this process, I almost created a new one and decided I'd like the premium because it gives me all of those extras. And then I realized, hmm, when it cost me $143.58 in Australian dollars for that service for the year, I didn't really want to follow through on that. You might want to choose the personal one, which will work out to half that price at $4 a month. So have a look at what's on offer and what you'll be locking yourself in for. And the third thing to do is to create an about page. Just a paragraph about you with an image is all you need to get started. I'm sure you'll come back to your about page and add things later. This is how my about page looks for the moment in my WordPress site, which is coachcarolonline.com. I also subscribe to Blogger and I have a couple of Blogger sites. So in creating a new one of those, it was a fairly simple process to create an extra one. I first signed into my Blogger account and followed the steps on the left. If you do not yet have a Blogger account, you would go to blogger.com and create one. The steps that I'm showing here today are the same. So step one in Blogger is to choose a theme. Plenty to choose from, lots of wonderful templates that will colour and make your blog site sing. I chose this one called Notable Coral, love the name, and for the colour scheme itself and the way it shows the blog posts with an image right on the home page. Have a look through all of the themes that Blogger provides for you. Most of them are free, some you might need to pay for. Pick one that you like. You can always change it again later. Second step is to check the preferred layout for your blog. And Blogger is nice and simple. It gives you a default layout, which includes a page body in the middle and a sidebar with things that people can read. For example, your about page, which will appear on the right hand side and not clutter up your blog posts. You'll see on the left, there are many things you can do when you are managing your blogger site, layout being one of them. Don't stress too much at this stage, make it a simple process for yourself and move on to the next step. And yes, you guessed it, create an about page. Remember a blog site gives you two types of posting options. One is called a page, which is like a static page. And the second are the blog posts, which will appear one on top of each other as you create them and post them. So this is how my blogger about page looks. It's exactly the same information. It just looks a little different in blogger. The next most important point that I wanted to make for you when you're creating your blog site is how to plan. The first thing is to consider what time availability you have. If you've got all the time in the world, then you can plan big. If your time is limited, then be smart about how much work you're setting yourself up for. The second is to select the ancestors that you want to write about from your tree. Some of these might automatically pop into your mind. Oh, I must tell that story. Oh, and I must include that one. So that go with that. Listen to the voice in your head. And the third thing in your planning is to plot your story content. More about that in a moment. So the planning steps. 
your time availability. I think that's most important to consider right up front. If you are planning to write a blog post every day, then you're committing yourself to an hour or two in that day. Think about the time you have available for that process. You might even set little reminders like that one just now about when it's time to write your blog. But be kind to yourself, don't overstep it, keep it simple. The step that I recommend next is to consider which of your ancestors you wish to write your first blog post about. Pick the one that jumps up in the air and really speaks to you and go with that. You'll probably find that as you finish one blog post about an ancestor, you'll want to write another one fairly quickly. So keep these planning steps in mind as you do each of them. And step three is to plot your story content. Now, one of the things that I do is I write ancestral cards using Trello, which I showed you in the last lesson. That's just one way. You could use a whiteboard and map it out that way, planning what you're going to write in this story about your ancestor. Or you could use post-it notes and ar arrange those and rearrange them to get the structure and the plot for your story. But whatever you do, plan that well in advance. And next comes the enjoyable part of posting. So these are the steps that I recommend for when you are ready to post. First, schedule when your posts are going to be done in advance. Set a reminder, write it in your diary, and consider what is the best time for you to write them and post them, and what might be the most optimal time for your readers to access and read them. I like doing a lot of my blog posts at the end of the week, giving people a weekend to catch up. Second thing is to gather the data and write the story. This is the real work. Get down to it now and write that story. It might be just 500 words to begin with, that's fine. And as you increase in your confidence, could be 1,000, 1,500 words. Think about what images you would like to illustrate it with and gather those too. And third thing is to then post the story into the blog. I'll show you how in a moment. So in my blogger, this is where the posts will appear that you can see in the central part. And on the right hand side is this little navigation bar, which shows the about me page. It's nice and simple. But it means when someone comes in, they will see the blog posts, the most current will be on the top. So schedule when you are going to post to your blog. As I said before, you may be using your ancestral cards to help gather the data and write the story. So go back and have a look at that and make sure that you are including what you plan to include in this story. My current project is to write the story of my great grandmother, Jemima Mary Ann Blackburn, who married my great grandfather, Samuel John Allery. The next step is to add your story as a post. Each of the blog services that I've described for you will give you hints along the way as to how to do that. You've got templates and styling sheets within them to make it look easy to read and to highlight your headings. This time round, as I started this brand new post in Blogger, I started with a simple post, which was like an introduction to what the readers are going to find in here. You might consider that as a good starting point for yourself. Then you add the actual story or your post. And in this one, I'm beginning to talk about my great grandparents, Samuel and Jemima. 
and illustrating with real documents from their time in 1884. Can't see it very clearly there, that, but that's part of their marriage certificate. And then of course, once you've got all of that process well and truly planned, practiced and executed, you'll be eager to do more. So I do urge you to follow some of these steps to continue with your blog series. That's it for now. I'll be back with another lesson real soon.